let's quickly make a map of last week's earthquakes as recorded by the USGS Earthquake Center. So if I go ahead here and go to ArcGIS Online, I'm going to do a search. I'm going to search for plates for types. That gives me a quick plate boundary map classified by the type of plates. This is a map that I've created in the past, and I'm going to go ahead and use it now. So I'm going to go ahead and open that map. And the second thing I'm going to do is pull up a legend. There's our legend. And now I'm going to modify the map up in the upper right. So I'm going to modify the map. And then that gives me an add button. And go ahead here and say, hmm, please add layer from the web. It is a CSV file. And so I'm going to go ahead and paste the magnitude 2.5 and, and above from the last seven days from the USGS. It's going to add that data set. We get this smart mapping option here, which quickly maps the data according to what we want. Now, we don't want the default here, so I'm going to go ahead and change it to magnitude. And those are the magnitudes of the earthquakes from the last seven days. If I don't like that classification or those colors, I can certainly change it. But I'm going to go ahead and say done here. Then I'm going to pull up a legend. This number two here is not all that helpful in terms of the name. So I'm going to go ahead and rename it. And I'm going to say last seven days earthquakes mag 2.5 and above. That's all good. So I'm done now. And now I can go ahead and look at the magnitudes of the earthquakes for the last seven days. So I can see right here that we've got a 4.6 and so on. Here's some along the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. Here's one at 4.8. Let's go ahead and pull up that legend again, and there we go. If I want to change a symbol to indicate the really, really large ones, okay, the biggest ones in the data set, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up that legend, I'm going to pull up the layer list, and now I'm going to go ahead and Let's go ahead and show legend there. There's the legend. Let's go ahead and change the style. And under options here, I can change this. So I'm going to go ahead and select symbols here. And here's where we can change the symbols, the size, the shape, the color, and that sort of thing. So I can go ahead and say OK there. But if I want to change just the largest ones to, let's say, a red, I can go ahead and classify the data. Now, if I go to symbols, as you can see, I've got the same symbol choices there, but if I go right over here to this symbol, now if I pull up classes right here, then I can change this one to, as you can see here, the fill color. Let's say I want that to be a dark red. So now I've got the largest ones, and you know what? That's just a bit large, so I'm going to go ahead and bump down the sizes, maybe make the largest one a 25 and say OK there. So now I've got a, let's go ahead and check, I've got a natural breaks, four classes, let's say I want five classes, and notice how the size is bumped up again, so let's go ahead and change that back down. And now I've got five classes, natural breaks, and again, I don't want the largest one to be this color, I actually want it to be a different color, so I'm going to go ahead and notice the fill here. And what I want is in here, pick, on, pick the legend, and then on that one, you can change the fill to a different color. So let's go ahead and make that a that kind of a color, and then let's say OK, and then done. Now what I've got is I've got the largest ones actually standing out in a different color. So that allows me to really pick out these 4.7s to 7 quite a bit easier than the way I was doing it before. Great. Thanks.